There are only a few spots in the American West where you see a confluence of all the major themes of the history of the West. One of these places is Auburn, California. In the county seat of Placer County, we see the mingling of the histories of the westward movement as Auburn is on a tentacle of the California Trail. The Transcontinental Railroad, as the city was a major stop on the route. There is a substantial California gold rush presence, and surprisingly, echoes of Thomas Jefferson and the Lewis and Clark expedition. And all of these threads are found in one person who lived and worked in the Foothill community, an individual who is known as Pompey. His actual name was Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau. Jean-Baptiste was born in what is now North Dakota during the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1805. He was the son of the expedition's Native American guide, Sacago Wea. His father, the French-Canadian trapper Toussaint Charbonneau, was an interpreter on the trip. Charbonneau had two Indian, quote-unquote, wives. They were actually slaves. Sacago Wea was one of them. She was about 16 at the time of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Jean-Baptiste's birth is quite likely the best documented delivery in the history of the 19th century American West. It may also be the most unusual. On February 11, 1805, Meriwether Lewis, one of the co-commanders of the Corps of Discovery, as the Lewis and Clark expedition was called, recorded the birth in his journal. He wrote, quote, About five o'clock this evening, one of the wives of Charbonneau was delivered of a fine boy. It is worthy of remark that this was the first child which this woman had borne, and as is common in such cases, her labor was tedious and the pain violent. Mr. Jessam informed me that he had frequently administered a small portion of the rattle of the rattlesnake, which he assured me had never failed to produce the desired effect, that of hastening the birth of the child. Having the rattle of a snake by me, I gave it to him, and he administered two rings of it to the woman, broken in small pieces with the fingers, and added to a small quantity of water. Whether this medicine was truly the cause or not, I shall not undertake to determine, but I was informed that she had not taken it more than ten minutes before she brought forth. Perhaps this remedy may be worthy of future experiments, but I must confess that I want faith as to its efficacy." Unquote. There are not any clearly verifiable images of Jean-Baptiste as an adult, but we certainly have lots of depictions of him as the child known as Pompey. The rattlesnake-induced infant was nicknamed Little Pomp or Pompey by William Clark, the other leader of the famous journey. Although it is in dispute, some believe that the nickname Pompey is a Shoshone word, which means the little chief or little dancing boy. Pompey traveled with his mother on the expedition, frequently carried on her back. Not only was the journey difficult for the newborn, but Pompey also contracted a potentially deadly illness in those days of primitive medical care. Suffering from what is believed to be either mumps or tonsillitis, the Corps of Discovery became very protective of the baby as the child slowly recovered. They came to view Pompey as a kind of good luck charm and mascot. Pompey is credited by historians as being a reassuring presence to the natives that Lewis and Clark encountered underscoring the expedition's peaceful intentions. Pompey's image can be found on the Chicago Way of Dollar Coin. The infant is shown resting happily, carried protectively on Chicago Way's back. He is the only child ever depicted on American currency. The rock formation called Pompey's Pillar on the Yellowstone River in Montana is named for him. Soon after the conclusion of the expedition in 1806, Little Pompey began residing with William Clark in St. Louis. Clark paid for his education, including schooling in Missouri. In 1823, at age 18, Pompey, now preferring to be called Jean Baptiste, worked at an Indian trading post near Kansas City. There he met a royal visitor from Germany, Duke Friedrich Paul Wilhelm of Württemberg. The Duke was on a natural history expedition in the Great Plains. Jean-Baptiste's long-lost father was the Duke's guide. Duke Friedrich invited Jean-Baptiste to return to Europe as his guest, and the now not-so-little Pompey 
traveled throughout Europe and North Africa for the next six years. In 1829, Jean-Baptiste returned to the United States to work as a fur trapper and hunting guide. William Boggs, a tourist, described Jean-Baptiste as a character who, quote, wore his hair long and was very high strung, unquote. And, as Boggs continued, quote, it was said Charbonneau was the best man on foot on the plains or in the Rocky Mountains, unquote. Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau was a trapper and guide for many years until 1846, when he was hired as a scout for General Stephen Kearney's expedition to California. In 1847, Charbonneau accepted an appointment by Colonel John Stevenson to serve as alcalde of Mission San Luis Rey de Francia. It was Stevenson's soldiers who would play a large part in the founding and naming of Auburn. Charbonneau resigned his post in August 1848 and joined the giddy first days of the gold rush. In September 1848, Charbonneau arrived in Placer County at North Fork Dry Diggins. Not long after his arrival, the settlement would be renamed Auburn by members of Stevenson's regiment who were natives of Auburn, New York, and were now expectantly swarming the reportedly rich gold fields. Jean-Baptiste settled near Secret Ravine, one of the 12 ravines in and around Auburn. He was a semi-successful miner at this ravine and several others in the region. The 1882 book History of Placer County declared that Pompey's Auburn claim was, quote, shallow and paid well, unquote. Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau would reside in Auburn for the next 16 years. He stayed that long because he quickly realized that to survive in the gold rush town, Pompey had to do something in addition to mining, a notoriously fickle pursuit. In addition to seasonal mining, Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau worked as the hotel manager, or clerk, of the Orleans Hotel in what is now referred to as Old Town Auburn. In April 1866, for reasons that are still unclear, Jean-Baptiste left Auburn for Montana, most likely to prospect for gold, although the Placer Herald, an Auburn newspaper, reported that Charbonneau's purpose was, quote, returning to familiar scenes, unquote, in the Great Basin. Only a few weeks later, en route to eastern Oregon, Charbonneau died on May 16, 1866. The reports were uncertain as to the cause of the death. It may have been a fall from his horse, or a wagon accident in a river, or inhaling alkali dust, or pneumonia, or drinking contaminated stream water, we simply do not know. Pompey's obituary in the Placer Herald stated that he succumbed to, quote, mountain fever, unquote, a rapidly debilitating tick-transmitted viral infection. Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau is buried near Danner, Oregon, and several monuments erected by historical societies, civic organizations, and Native American groups mark the spot. Pompey's grave is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The town of Charbonneau, Oregon, is named for him. A memorial plaque honoring Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau rests in the shade of a cedar tree near the old firehouse in Auburn, across the street from where the Orleans Hotel used to stand. There is also a plaque embedded in the sidewalk in Auburn Central Square.